Hey guys, welcome to Simulation TV, Simulation in Action. My name is Apollo Vandenberg and I'm going to walk you through CFD's motion module and specifically how a fluid moves apart. Today we're going to be looking at an axial check valve and trying to understand how the hydrodynamic forces try to open a valve that has a spring acting on the backside, trying to close the valve up. Um, our objectives are, are to determine how the poppet opens and what the displacement is over time, as well as determine the forces acting on the poppet. And then lastly, we're going to visualize the flow as well as animate the, the poppet itself moving. So let's go ahead and jump over to Simulation CFD and take a peek at how to set this up. So starting out in Fusion, we have our model with uh, the solid bodies and two end caps. We're going to launch into Simulation CFD and start setting this geometry up. As the model comes in, we're actually going to start assigning the, the fluid material, which is going to be water, to both of the end caps as well as the automatically created fluid volume that's inside of it. So as we uh, hide this volume, we'll see the interior volume that's created. One aspect that we're also going to do is we're going to change the water's environment to be variable. What this is going to do is it's going to increase some of our stability for flow-driven motion parts as the axial check valve. We have three solid bodies that we're going to assign as aluminum, um, including the poppet. So we're going to pick solid and set it to aluminum 7075. And then we're going to try and set up our boundary conditions. So as you can see on the exterior, we have a designation saying which way flow is going. So we're going to pick our inlet, assign a flow rate of 0.2 cubic meters per minute. And then we're going to rotate the body around. And on the outlet side, we're going to say that the outlet is just zero pressure or a zero Pascal gauge. With meshing, meshing is pretty important for motion models. Uh, we want to make sure that we're capturing how the body is moving and, and how the fluid flow field is developing. So we're going to pick the exterior solids, which we don't care about, and suppress them. And then we're going to grab the interior fluid volume and the poppet, and we're actually going to refine this to better capture how that solid poppet moves in the domain. Now we want to set up the actual motion of this model. Um, as we come into the motion dialog, we have a couple different types. We're going to set it to be linear, linear and flow driven. We can set bounds on, uh, on this as to hard stops as to where the poppet can move um, physically constrained in between two data points. And then we're going to come into the edit dialog and set up its properties. For flow-driven motion, we have the ability to have constant forces, tabular forces, or spring rates. Um, if we come in, we can set the, the, the preload that's acting on this spring, the final compression force acting on it, as well as what the uh, preload displacement uh, is, is on the spring itself. So once assigned, we can preview this to make sure that we have everything set in the correct direction, make sure that the body is actually moving um, this way to, to be against uh, the, the flow force and um, start, start running the model. With this, since motion is going to be a function of time, it's a transient analysis, we want to make sure that we are setting a time step size small enough to capture how that motion occurs and how the flow field develops. So we're going to pick uh, a time step size of 0 0.0001 and we want to save intermediate results so that we can capture frames to animate. So our save interval is going to be 10, and we're just going to kick it off real quick for 100 iterations and uh, see how the results come out. So once the mo model is done meshing, we'll be able to, to come in and start looking immediately at how the flow field is starting to develop around the, the poppet itself. So here the model's meshed. Uh, we'll go ahead and come up to the planes dialog. We're going to add a cut plane, turn it to be parallel to the flow. And then we're also going to take a second, and if you jump into the design study bar, we can set this to be shaded and actually show a, a standard color 
so we can better visualize the poppet as it's moving. All right, so we've gone ahead and jumped over through the analysis to the end of the run. Um, once we get done with this run, if we were interested in understanding how the poppet moved versus time, the actual raw data, as well as the forces acting on the body between the flow field and the, the uh, spring itself, we can come up to the motion results. This is going to bring open a, a spreadsheet that we could save and, and plot in Excel, and it'll give us all of our data, the time versus uh, linear velocity, linear displacement, and, and all of the forces acting on that body. If we want to get a little bit better understanding of the, the flow field acting around the poppet itself, we can go ahead and turn on vectors. Uh, we can come into the vector settings to make those vectors a little bit larger as well as a little bit of a, of a finer grid spacing as well so that we can really understand how the flow field comes around the edge of the poppet and, and through the orifice um, in front of it. So what we're trying to do is set up a nice model so that we can actually animate how this poppet moves. So in the design study bar, any suppressed part we can enable by checking the box and giving it a, a shaded color uh, to match the poppet itself. Uh, we can rotate it around and use the little grab handles here um, to rotate the cut plane to be better positioned for our, our visual that we're going to use in our animation. So once we have that settled, the, the way that we want to do this animation, uh, we'll, we'll come in and just right click anywhere off of the model and we're going to use the, the animation menu. So if you right click, you'll see uh, animation. And then here we can select of those frames that we saved, which ones we want to use. Um, in this case, since there's only 10, we're going to select them all and then hit play. And at this point, we're going to be able to see how that, that poppet moves and how the flow field uh, around the poppet itself develops with a little bit of recirculation on the downstream side. So I hope this episode of Simulation TV has been useful for you. Uh, thank you for, for watching. <laughs>